Good day grade 10. In this lesson we're going to be looking, we're still looking at equations, but we're going to be looking at multi-step linear equations. It's like, slightly more complicated than what we did in our last lesson. So let's have a look at some examples. Solve for x. And we have x minus 8 is equal to x over 3 plus 1 6. Now the first thing I want to do here, and there's multiple ways to do this problem, but what I want to do just to simplify the fractions, I'm going to multiply everything times the least common multiple of all of these guys' denominators. This is essentially x over 1, this is 8 over 1, x over 3, 1 over 6. The least common multiple of 1, 3, and 6 is 6. And so if I multiply everything times 6, what that's going to do is going to clear out these fractions. So these weren't fractions to begin with, so we're just multiplying them by 6. So it becomes 6x minus 6 times negative 8 is or 6 times 8 is 48, and there's a we're subtracting it right over there. And then we have x over 3 times 6. Let me just write it out here. So that's going to be 6 times x over 3 plus 6 times 1 over 6. Or we get 6x minus 48 is equal to 6 times something divided by 3. That's the same thing as 6 divided by 3 times that something. That's just going to be equal to 2x plus 6 times 1 6, or 6 divided by 6 is just going to be 1. So that first step cleared out all of the fractions. And now this is just a straightforward problem with all uh, integer coefficients or integers on either side of the equation. And what we want to do is we want to isolate all of the x's on one side or the other. And we might as well isolate them all on the left-hand side. So let's subtract 2x from both sides. We want to get rid of this 2x here. That's why I'm subtracting the 2x. So let's subtract 2x from both sides. And on the right-hand side, I have 2x plus 1 minus 2x. Those cancel out. That was the whole point. So I'm left with just this 1 over here. On the left-hand side, I have 6x minus 2x. Well, that's just going to be 4x. If I have 6 of something minus 2 of that something, I have 4 of that something minus 48. And now I can, let's see, I want to get rid of this 48 on the left-hand side because I want only x's here. So let me add 48 to both sides of the equation. Do this in a new color. So let me add 48 to both sides of this equation. And on the left-hand side, 4x minus 48 plus 48, those cancel out. I'm left with just a 4x. And on the right-hand side, 1 plus 48 is going to be 49. And now I've isolated the x, but it's still multiplied by a 4. So to make that a 1 coefficient, let's multiply both sides by 1 fourth. Or you could also say, let's divide both sides by 4. Anything you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And so you have, what do we have over here? 4x over 4 is just x. x is equal to 49 over 4. And that's about as far as we can simplify it, because these don't have any common factors, 49 and 4. Well, let's check to see whether 49 fourths is indeed the answer. So let's put it into the original equation. Remember, the original equation is what we have in green here before we multiplied it before we multiplied it by 6. But in theory, we should be able to uh, put it into any of these steps, and the x should satisfy it. But let's do it in our original equation. So we have x minus 8. So we have 49 over 4 minus 8 should be equal to 49 over 4, 49 over 4, over 3, over 3, plus 1 over 6. So let's see what we can do here. So what we can, let's see, we can multiply, well, like we did before, we can multiply both sides of this equation by 6. That'll help simplify a lot of the fractions here. So if we multiply both sides of this equation by 6, so we're going to multiply everything, everything by 6, what do we get? On the left-hand side, 6 over 4 is the same thing as 3 over 2, right? So this is going to be 3 times 49 over 2. 3 times 49 over 2 minus 48. Minus 48 will be equal to 6 divided by 3 is 2. So it's going to be 2 times 49 over 4, which is the same thing as 49 over 2. And then 6 times 1, 6 is plus 1. And let's see. We can. Well, I'm just going to I'm just going to actually just evaluate them out. I could just essentially have to, you know, subtract 49 over 2 from both sides and that'll simplify things. But let me just let me just figure out what these evaluate to. So 3 times 49, 49 times 3. You could think about it it's going to be 3 less than 50 times 3, so it's 147, but let's just multiply it out. 9 times 3 is 27. 
4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So 147. So this is 147 over 2. And then let's put this over a denominator of 2. So 48 is equal to 96 over 2, right? 96 divided by 2 is 48. I just multiplied this by 2. So this is minus 96 over 2 needs to be equal to 49 over 2 plus, and let's instead of having this a 1, let's write that as 2 over 2. And what's 47 minus 96? So 47 minus 100 would be, uh, or 147 minus 100 would be 47, but we're going to subtract 4 more than that. So we're going to have it's going to be, or, or so we're going to subtract 4 less than 100. So it's going to be 147 minus 40, 96 is going to be 51. 51 over 2 is equal to 49 plus 2 is 51 over 2. So it all checks out. All right, grade tens. I hope that helped you. But let's do a couple more examples just to make sure you do understand. Um, and also because there's some skills that you need to learn. Okay, so now if we look at this one, you can see that we've got 5x over 3 minus 2 is equal to x over 4 plus 15. So before I start working out what my common denominator is and everything else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything that has an x and take it to the one side and everything that doesn't have an x and take that to the other side. So what we've got here then is I've got 5x over 3 minus x over 4 because when you take this across the equal sign it becomes a minus is equal to 15 plus 2 because when I take that across it becomes plus 2 so do you agree therefore then I have got equals 15 plus 2 sorry we can just write that straight away as 17 and we've got 5x over 3 minus x over 4. And now we can look at for a common denominator at the left hand side. And the common denominator that I would go for is 12. Why? Because it's the smallest number that both 3 and 4 can go into. So the common denominator is 12. So then we've got 3 goes into 12 4 times. 4 times 5 is 20. So we've got 20x minus 4 goes into 12 3 times. 3 times x is 3x is equal to 17. Right, now, do you agree that we can get rid of this 12 by multiplying it through to the other side? And we can subtract these two. So 20x minus 3x is 17x. And that becomes 17 times by 12. Now, I'm going to cheat and I'm not going to multiply this up by 17 because I can see that I've got a 17 on this side and a 17 on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 17 and that makes things a little bit easier because what do we do? We can cancel. So we get cancel, 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 cancel and therefore x is equal to 12. Okay, so the trick here was that we got the x's onto the one side and everything without an x on the other side. We then got a common denominator. We worked out what our fraction was. We solved for x. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, another one looks a little bit scary. Don't panic, okay? So if you look at this carefully, you can see that there's 3x plus 5 over 4 minus 7 equals x minus 5 over 2 minus 5x plus 13 over 6. Now in the previous question, because it was very obvious that there were just x's on the one side and nothing on the other side, we took all the x's onto the one side. We don't have to do that, but to keep in practice with what I've said, let's do that. So let's go through this. So we've got 3x plus 4. 5 over 4 minus, because I'm taking this to the other side, so it becomes minus x minus 5 over 2 minus, when you take it across the equal sign, becomes a plus 5x plus 13 all over 6 and it equals 7. Okay, now if we look at this again, we can see the smallest number that 4, 2 and 6 can go into is again 12. So we're going to put a common denominator of 12, a lowest common denominator. So we go 4 goes into 12 three times. So therefore we're going to go 3 times 3x minus 5 minus 2 goes into 12 six times, so it's 6 times x plus 5 
plus 6 goes into 12 twice, so it's 2 times 5x plus 13 equals 7. Now we want to get rid of the denominator. So to get rid of the denominator, we multiply both sides by this denominator. So we end up with just 3 times 3x minus 5 minus 6 times x plus 5 plus 2 times 5x plus 13 equals 7 times 12, which is 84. And if you don't know your times table, you can do that on a calculator. But it's always good to practice your times tables. So now we just need to get rid of these brackets and simplify. So 3 times 3 is 9, so we've got 9x. Minus 3 times 5 is 15. Minus 6x. Minus times the plus is a minus, that's minus 30. 2 times 5 is plus 10x. And 2 times 13 is 26, so it becomes plus 26 equals 84. Okay, now all we do is add our like terms. We've got 9x minus 6x plus 10x. So 9 is minus 9x minus 6x is 3x. And then we add the 10x, we get 13x. And then we've got minus 30 minus 15 is 45. And then we are subtracting 26 from that, so it becomes minus, no, we, well, we're adding 26 to negative 45, so it becomes minus 19 equals 84. And if we take that across, we get 13x equals 103. And now we divide both sides by 13. And therefore we get that x is equal to 103 over 13, because this, of course, obviously cancels. And 103 is not divisible by 13 nicely, so that is your answer. Right, grade 10, you need to go and practice these, make sure you can do them, and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Thank you, have a lovely day. Ooh.